Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Thursday Morning Devos. Uh, I'll be honest, this is Wednesday evening. It's a beautiful night and I'm out paddle boarding. And uh, let me see here, I don't know if you can see over there, but you got the boats in the background. Um, it's a little breezier than I thought it was gonna be, but uh, that's all right. Makes for a bit more of a challenge to stay on top of the board and uh, keeps you cool on a very humid day. Um, I was thinking uh, about wind a lot this weekend as it relates to boats because I was actually uh, supposed to be in a paddleboard race on Saturday in King Carden. And uh, I rented a hotel room for the Friday night, got there Friday and they canceled the race because they were expecting winds up to 50 kilometers an hour. Um, and uh, sure enough, the next day it was beautiful, but it was cool and the waves were crashing in on shore and uh, it was uh, it was a it was a great couple days beautiful town and uh, a bunch of us who were there for the race that got canceled rented surfboards and went out and did our best to uh, to try a different type of board sport but I was thinking about that story in Mark chapter 4 where Jesus is with his disciples in the boat and it says that as they're out on the the Sea of Galilee a storm comes out of nowhere and there were waves crashing over the side of the boat so much so that the boat was almost swamped and you can just picture the disciples frantically getting their bailing buckets out and, and trying to dump the water over the uh, over the edges and, and uh, keep the boat afloat. Meanwhile Jesus it says is asleep on a cushion the back of the boat which is a pretty almost comical picture if you think about it one of the disciples finally realizes hey Jesus isn't here and he might be able to do something so they run back and wake Jesus up now I I can't prove this but in my heart of hearts I honestly can picture Jesus almost opening one eye and smirking to himself wondering how long it will take them before they come and get Jesus before they come and ask for help sure enough the disciples come they they wake him up and they say Lord don't you care that we're going to drown have you ever prayed that prayer to God God do you do you care that I'm drowning in debt that my relationship has been shattered my my uh, my family is falling apart my my job might be ending. I don't know if we articulate it that way, but sometimes when things are tough, we cry out to God, God, are, are you even paying attention? By the way, the psalmist does this a lot. We've talked about the lament psalms, where King David and many others cry out to God. Psalm 22, the psalm that Jesus borrowed on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It sounds like a presumptuous prayer, but it's better than no prayer at all, and it's honest. God, do you even care? Jesus, do you care that we're going to drown? Now, this accusation's a little illogical because if the disciples all drown, well, what about Jesus? He's in the same boat. Surely he would help them, if for no other reason, to help himself. And Jesus does get up, it says he rebukes the wind. He, tells the wind and the waves to knock it off. Peace, be still. And sure enough, creation obeys, like in Genesis 1 and at different points throughout the scriptures. What a powerful display of the power of Jesus for his disciples. Although since Jesus was there in Genesis 1 and is responsible for the very creation he was commanding, Maybe it makes a little more sense than we think. It says that the disciples were really scared now. Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? They were scared of the storm. Now they're a little bit scared of Jesus because they recognize Jesus is even more powerful than the storm. Hey, we get in situations and the situations can be scary. They can be overwhelming. They can be powerful. And yet, if we have a true perspective of who God is, of what Jesus can do, of the power of the Holy Spirit, 
Maybe, maybe a greater awe for the God of the universe would help us put things in perspective, recalibrate things, even have us a little more concerned about our relationship with Jesus than, than be concerned about the challenge that we're facing. And Jesus says, oh, you of little faith. I like to think that Jesus said this as a term of endearment, maybe even pity, but certainly compassion. Oh, if you only knew what a little bit of faith, a mustard seed size of faith could accomplish. You know, I, I never noticed this before, but when I was looking up uh, this passage of scripture. I, I knew it was early in Mark and Mark chapter four starts with that famous passage about the seeds that are planted and how the seed that falls on good soil, how, how the seed grows, how faith blossoms and produces a, a harvest. And there's several other stories that talk about living a life of faith. It's interesting that Jesus taught his disciples all about faith. And then immediately after these parables and stories, they're in a real life situation where they forgot everything that they had learned. I can forget too. I can forget the things I preached on Sunday or the things I read in my devotions that morning. But Jesus is patient. He loves us. He's so kind, so good. One of the reasons I, I wanted to share this story with you and, and share this scripture was to encourage you was was to especially reach out to anybody that's facing uh, challenging circumstances in their life and they feel like their boat is being swamped and they're not sure what to do. Run to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. Have faith, even just a tiny bit of faith in Jesus. But the other reason I'm sharing this story, right now I'm actually in the marina uh, here in Bowmanville. Uh, I'm, uh, there's some boats parked over there, as you saw earlier. And I read an interesting quote the other day that said, the safest place for a boat is in the harbor. But that's not where boats were built and designed to stay. Sometimes I think as Christians and as churches, it's real tempting to think about how we can create a safe harbor a, a place where we, we don't face storms and challenges. And while I suspect we all agree it's impossible to avoid storms altogether, and while it would be reckless to go out seeking storms, sometimes when you're out doing what boats do, sail, row, paddle, you encounter wind and waves. And as a Christian and as a church, it's important to know that we were designed we were created for that very purpose. And while we're out there navigating the wind and the waves, we're to offer hope and even rescue for people that are struggling with those wind and waves. It's harder to help people out on the lake or out in the ocean when you're tethered safely in the harbor. But if we're gonna leave the harbor, we have to do it in faith. We have to do it in full confidence, not in our own abilities, but in the power of God. Hey, I hope you have a great morning. Uh, I, I hope I have a great rest uh, of my evening as I finish my paddle uh, here. But, you know, God has some wonderful plans for Trolls Road Church. And, um, and it, won't, it won't come to fruition if we stay in the harbor. God bless you. Have a great week. Hope to see you Sunday, if not before.